Welcome back. So second half of the week, I'm well into finishing the wiring and what you're looking at here is a diode and the purpose of this is to allow um, backup power to be used for certain circuits and it, what this does allows you to have uh, two different power sources powering the same thing without you getting sort of a cross feed from one to the other. So anyway, um, you can look that up online. No, it looks like that's fitting and so uh, here's Jeff uh, just fitting the baggage door. So after he bonded in that lower strake section, he cut out the baggage door opening and now he's actually oh, really? just trim fitting the doors there and then ultimately we'll have hinges and locks holding those in place. And um, moving on with more of the wiring. So on the left there is a transformer for the pressurization controller to take the voltage from 12 to 24 and on the right is another diode in that little box there and that allows us to have backup power running to that transformer as well so if you're at 25,000 feet and you lose your main battery um, the pressurization system doesn't just drop off and uh, this is the intake scoop so what we're doing here is uh, Devon did an extra layup and some extra carbon fiber in the back there just to beef up that section there because we're going to have um, hinges in there that allows the intake scoop to sort of rotate uh, a bit at the front there and allow more air or less air and also too he's setting up here just to put some hard points in there some FR4 as you can see he's got that clamped in place and they're match drilled already with uh, two quarter inch holes so we'll be able to mount a bracket onto that later on and there it is a little bit later on after it's all set up and uh, been sort of trimmed off and then the back section there as well has been cleaned up so that's ready to have the hinges there mounted and I'm moving on to the lower panels there for the dash and what I've done here is I've marked out uh, the top hole there is where it's the hole's going to be is um, for USB power and the other ones are for Limo um, jack for Bose headphones and then just a regular headset uh, headphone and microphone jack and here's the one on the other side just marked it out with a silver pen there and I initially just took a craft knife uh, as you'll see here took a craft knife and just uh, cut back the um, the vinyl carefully because you just don't want to get in there with a drill it'll just grab it and rip everything so I just cut it back carefully and then uh, just worked with the step drill to step up through to the sizes that I needed and the Limo socket um, which is you know basically a powered headphone jack socket for a Bose headset that has the flat sides on it so um, you don't want to just drill a regular hole that size because then there's a chance it will sort of rotate in, in place so uh, what I did there was I just drilled the hole slightly undersized basically the the width of what the um, of what the narrow section or the flat section is on the socket and then I got back in there uh, afterwards as you see using the Dremel uh, Dremel tool just to sort of uh, elongate the hole a little bit and just you know doing it a bit at a time uh, until I had the uh, socket fitting nicely in there so you'll see that here uh, in a second this is where I'm working with the Dremel I'm just measuring the hole there with my caliper and uh, yeah just double checking it with the with the Limo socket there so the reason why I put the Limo sockets in is because um, you know the newer headsets come with the, a lot of them come with the Limo jacks on them it just allows you to have a powered socket on there and not have to worry about batteries and things like that and it wasn't a big deal to add it it just hooks up to the existing um, up to the existing headphone and microphone socket just basic wiring and then there's just a ground and power uh, that's added to that as well and I'm thinking of possibly getting a hold of uh, you know one of those new Bose headsets that um, sort of just the in-ear ones instead of uh, just the regular over-ear ones I've seen um, you know various people using those and there's a possibility and I've mentioned this before with um, you know our engine being fairly quiet and prop being fairly quiet and a pressurized sealed cabin that uh, we may be able to get away with um, a, you know lower performing headset or at least you know one that's more comfortable um, than you know having a regular over ear headset so um, you know if I was going to buy a new headset I would I would get one with a limo socket on it so I didn't have to deal with batteries or anything like that. So that's what that looks like, um, ready to install. Yeah, moving right along, it's time to work on the electrical system for the air conditioning unit. So 
Um, we're using this aftermarket digital controller, a climate control system, so it has its own wiring diagram and such. And uh, these two little control units, so I've mounted those there on that frame. And uh, the next step is to hook all the wires up in the right order and get everything sorted out, ready to go back into the aircraft. And back out in the shop, we've actually taken the wings off of the fuselage there and also the foreplane. Wings have gone back into their fixtures and likewise with the foreplane. So the wings are actually ready to be closed out. So that'll be happening soon. And uh, it looks kind of small again all of a sudden. And the cowling is pretty much mostly done there. So I can actually get back and do the few things in the engine that I need to do now. I've got easy access. So uh, that'll be happening uh, next week. I'll be uh, probably pulling that redrive out and putting those new oil rings in there. And uh, looking at the wings here, so yeah, they, they're ready to be closed out now. Um, all just basically, there's nothing else to do. To just put the lower skins on there, bond them on, and, uh, and then those are ready to have the ailerons and rudders fitted. And then this is the lower uh, intake tray there. And that also got an extra layup put on there to sort of beef it up because the other side of the hinges for the scoop is going to be mounted to that flat face there. And so here now I'm working on uh, the wiring for um, this air conditioning system. So there's just a whole bunch of different wires there. There's about th there's three different temperature sensors that need to be sort of um, hooked up to that little controller. And then there's um, one wire coming or that goes out to the air conditioning um, compressor to tell it to fire on through a relay. And then there's you've got power and you've got ground and you've got um, uh, there's another little probe thing that goes in the unit there that I guess it probes, I don't know, moisture or something like that in the evaporator. So all those things have to be all hooked up to that uh, little controller there. And I'm doing my best to, you know, make it nice and neat and tidy. And it's actually nice to be able to just sit and, and work on a bench here and do all this, you know, out of the aircraft and then just be able to take the whole thing and, and put it back into the aircraft and, uh, and get it done. Um, as opposed to what I've been doing, you know, recently working in the aircraft and trying to get things organized. And, and my hope now is just that this will actually go in fairly easily because now I've got... Um, you know all the avionics and wiring in place in the fuselage now and I didn't have that in there before and so this has to go in and the um, the four hoses there the two for the AC and the two for the heater need to sort of intermingle through uh, some of the wiring there that's at the back of, of where the um, the line replaceable units are in the for the avionics so I'm kind of a bit nervous just making sure. Obviously in the CAD everything fits nicely, but then you know trying to make it actually go through and uh, work the way it's pictured in the CAD is uh, what well, can be a little bit of a problem later on. Um, but as you can see, I'm making my way through there and got a few of the different wires hooked up there to the first top controller. And uh, here I'm just working through a few more. So this didn't actually take long to do in the diagram that they give you was uh, really well done so you know it was just nice to actually just go through this thing and get all the wires sorted out and uh, you know I haven't powered it up yet but we'll see uh, if all my work was uh, successful uh, next week when I get to actually power up the unit although we won't be powering up the compressor or the heater side of it at least I'll be able to you know just see if the electrical the display comes on and and get the blower to work and and that sort of stuff it's not until we, you know, do the final fitment of the engine that we're going to, um, you know, pressurize the um, the air conditioning side of it, and also, you know, fill up the the heater loop as well, because it's just pointless, you know, running a bunch of coolant up through there when we're going to be transporting uh, the fuselage uh, up to the airport, and you know, when we do that, we're going to be taking the engine off. Um, so we can get the aircraft out of the building and it's kind of you know silly just to go and pressurize the air, air conditioning system and fill the hot water loop and then have to you know undo all that again and clean up the mess <laughs> so uh, anyway yeah it was good to uh, just sit and work through a nice little pro um, project like this 
And as you can see there, they've got these pretty interesting little thing here. You've just got these little clips that you just press in and push the wires in and they click into place. So there's the finished product now with all the wires done for that. And the other loop there, that's the stuff that's going to be hooked into uh, the aircraft, the ground, and then a couple of power wires, and then the one wire that runs off to tell the compressor to fire up. And now we're on to Friday, and um, just actually just pulling the trigger here. I've got the glare shield in, and uh, Devin helped me put that in, and I said, well, okay, that fits in there nicely now, and um, it's not coming out now. I'm just going to work through and get everything done with it in there. So as you can see, I'm putting the avionics back in there. I've also got the um, little Wi-Fi hotspot in there. I've got the air conditioning unit. I managed to get it in there. It took a little bit of finagling to get it to fit around the avionics, but uh, it's sitting in there nicely. And as you can see, there's still quite a lot of room behind there. It's not like it's jammed in. I put the camera in there. You see, there's all kinds of room behind there. So uh, no, still I've been using those Velcro straps to tidy up the wiring, and I've got a few more places to do. But really, it's pretty well organised now, as organised as I had it in the CAD. And uh, there you can see I've got um, the vent line there, hooked up there for the defrost vents. And Devin and Jeff are just doing a little bit of rework there on this uh, lower skin for the four plane, on the left side and the right side, because we had already. Oh, he had already, already slotted out those for where those old hinge um, rollers were and because uh, we're not having those anymore he wanted to fill those um, gaps back in again so he's doing that with a layup and I'm making progress here in the cabin so got the little frame the lower framework there of the dash in as well and uh, just starting to put bits and pieces in there and you can see I've got the right hand side uh, lower section there put in and Devon has now been tasked with doing all the nut plates for the um, intake tray and he's actually going to be doing them for pretty much all the stuff for the cowling because we're just going to use uh, regular kind of nut plates for the back side of all the different parts of the cowling and then uh, just go ahead and just use some um, flat, flathead screws and some uh, washers around there just to tidy everything up and here you can see I'm installing uh, one of those Lim Limo sockets here now. I've got the USB one already installed in that uh, left-hand side of the lower dash there. And below that you see the headphone and microphone socket and had a little bit of a drama with that but managed to solve that. And uh, Devon's now moving on to um, putting the nut plates on there and just riveting, riveting them into place. As you can see, so this is uh, Devon's first time doing a uh, nut plate so he's actually moving along pretty well he got e expert tutelage from Jeff and off he went and here I'm getting ready to reinstall the audio panel a remote audio audio panel which goes in this slot and also the transponder which goes uh, down a little bit lower you'll see so what I had to do here was first thing to do that back plate in there needed to be screwed in place that was just set in there so just the screwdriver with the long extension there and just tighten those four screws that are there and sorry for the camera angle it's difficult to do three things at once um, so yeah just tighten those screws there and that helps uh, pull that back panel into place there and lock it in place and then you can just slide the unit in place and with the little allen key uh, hole in the front of it you just basically turn it around and it slowly draws itself in and all the pins get engaged nicely into those two different connectors. So there's that unit there, I'm just sliding that into place. And just using the Allen key, just tightening it up there. And then I'm also sliding in the one for the transponder. So I had basically two of those that needed to go in place. And uh, just checking to make sure it's all in nicely. And that's what it looks like. So here you can see now also I've got the uh, head unit there for the autopilot now installed. So things are happening in there. And Devon enlarged all the Clico holes there on that right side upper cowling. And uh, ready for having the screws and tinnaman washers that are going to hold that in place. And back in the cabin, so there's um, on the right hand side now the Limo socket and the headphone and microphone sockets. Or microphone and headphone. And over here the same thing and I just it turns out that I had actually drilled those holes too close together 
for the headphone and the microphone socket and uh, in behind there because those things are quite large with all the different um, wiring and everything on them I actually had to sort of uh, separate them a little bit but I uh, managed to get that to work okay and uh, finally um, just put the front seats in there in the center console just to have a look see how it's all coming along and just powered it up didn't get the uh, 750 to power up this time because of just a fitment issue it's not pushed all the way in um, but anyway I'll sort that out on Monday and uh, still not getting any GPS signal in there because I think we're in the building obviously um, but things are coming along there and next week I'm going to be able to actually start going through um, sorting out the things that aren't working and hooking up the power for the air conditioning unit um, probably hooking up the different indicators for the gear and also uh, getting a few other things sorted out in there and then eventually work to the back of the cabin where I've got to hook up the temp sensors that are in the tanks and also hook up the fuel level sensors the wiring for that and then get back into the engine compartment and uh, do a few things in there including changing out those oil rings and then put some oil in the engine again and um, top up the coolant and then uh, get ready to fire up without the prop on it but uh, anyway just get ready to fire it up again and then ultimately we'll get the prop on and there you can see how the overhead switches there are all lit up so and I think I showed you that the other day but uh, it's coming along really looks like something now with the seats in there and the console in there and everything looks super cool uh, with all that black uh, vinyl there and there you can see the center console there with the key switch in there we also put a little magnet latch on there to keep that shut nice big wide armrest so things are really moving along so that's our update for this week and if you haven't already please subscribe and click the little bell to be notified of new episodes you don't want to miss anything that's going to happen in the next few weeks as we get this thing ready to fly and uh, thanks again for watching <laughs>